Hope you're all safe and well. Now, we've been doing density recently. Now, if you were in school right now, you'd be doing a required practical. Now, the good news is that actually for this practical, you can do it at home. So I'm going to do it in my kitchen. If you've got these materials, you can have a go at it. If not, just watch the video and uh, pay attention. So, we've been looking at density. As we learned last week, density is mass divided by volume. Right, so it's a, it, 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 it's a measure of how much stuff is in a particular space. Right, so if something's very dense, it's a lot of mass in a small area, a small volume, it's not very dense, it's spread out over a bigger volume. Now what we're going to look at today is two practical ways to measure density. First off is for objects like this butter here. Now we call these regular objects. Right, so a regular object is something you can measure quite easily right, and use a formula like you do in maths to find the volume of something. So this is a cuboid, so we're going to need a ruler, and I'm going to measure the length, so the length there is 9 centimetres, its height is 4 centimetres, and its width is 6 centimetres. Okay, so I've got three measurements there. So to find the volume of a cuboid, all we do is multiply by three numbers. So the volume is going to be 9 times 6 times 4, okay, and that comes out at 216. Now all of these are in centimetres, so if we do centimetres times centimetres times centimetres, the unit is centimetres cubed, okay? So that's the tricky bit. The easy bit is measuring the mass. Now, it does actually tell me that it should be 250 grams on the front there. Let's see if that's true. Now here I'm just using, in the lab we'd use an electronic balance. Here I'm just using my baking balance. Right? It should give a similar sort of number, right? it's just that this is less precise. Here it only measures it to the nearest 10, whereas in the lab we could measure it to the nearest 0.1 grams. Okay? So here, put that on there, and yep, it comes out as 250 grams. So that, the mass there is 250 grams. So then to find the density, we just do the mass divided by the volume. So we're going to do 250 divided by 216, and to three significant figures, because that's what these are two, that comes out as uh, 1.16 grams per centimetre cubed. Okay, so there we have it. We have calculated the density of this butter by finding its mass with a balance and finding its volume by measuring its sides. Now, what we're going to do next is measure a different kind of object. So that was a regular object. Now we're going to do an irregular object, like this apple. Okay? So irregular objects are ones that they're not got nice shapes where we can just measure it, right? I mean, use a formula. There isn't a formula for this, right? It's not even a sphere because right, it's got this bit here and it's got this bit here. Right, so we can't use a formula, we can't easily measure this, so we're going to use a different way to find its volume. But first off, let's find its mass. That's the same. Okay, so we just put this on the scales. And that comes out as almost exactly 150 grams. Right, so for our apple, it's 150 grams. Now, to find the volume, we can use a principle discovered by a guy called Archimedes, ancient Greek. Now, he noticed that if you sit in the bath, the water goes up, right? So if you sit in a bath that's full up to the top and you get in, the water's going to go out the edge. Now, he realised that if you catch that water, the volume of that water is going to be equal to the volume of the thing you put in it, okay? Now, we're going to do the same sort of thing, but I'm going to do it with a measuring jug. So here, I've got a measuring jug, and it's filled up with water up to the very top. Okay, so there's water up to the very top, as if you just filled up a bath up to the top. Now, when I put the apple in here, the water's going to come out the front here, come out the spout. And I'm going to catch it in this other measuring jug. Okay, then if I work out what is the volume of water in here, that tells me what the volume of this thing is. Okay, so it's a nice, neat principle. In the lab, we would use something called a displacement can, or a eureka can, but it's the same sort of thing. It's just a can with a hole in the side. And then we'd use a measuring cylinder instead of a measuring jug, again, because it's more precise. So, I'm going to do this carefully, because otherwise the water will go everywhere. So, if I do it slowly, you should begin to see the water coming out the front of the, of the jug. Yeah, and that seems to be working, and I'm catching it with the other jug. Okay, so here the water's being displaced, and I'm catching it. Now, the only issue with the apple is that the apple actually floats. 
So not all of it, not all of it goes underwater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it down a little bit until it's completely submerged. So if an object floats, you have to push it down a little bit. If it doesn't, that's not a problem. Okay, so that's now stopped, stopped and I've caught some water in here. The volume of this water is the same as the volume of the apple. So if I read that, that comes out as about 170 mils, 170 milliliters. Now, quick tip, one millimeter, milliliter, is the same as a cubic centimeter. So 170 mils is just 170 centimeters cubed. Right? So, that's, so our volume is 170 centimeters cubed. And now all we have to do is we do mass divided by volume. Okay, so we do 150, 150 divided by 170, and I think that comes out at about 0.88 grams per centimeter cubed. So there we found the density of the apple. And then one last little thing to say is that the density of water is one gram per centimetre cubed. So if something's less dense than water, it'll float. Now, 0.88 is less than one gram, so the apple should float, and we found that that's exactly what happened. Okay? So anyway, that's how to measure density for both a regular object and an irregular object. We can either use the formula, or we can use the displacement cap. Okay? Hope that helps. See you later.